I, the myth of Sisyphus basically like this guy gets sentenced to like push a rock up a hill and then it like rolls down like every like this like, is Greek mythology. He yeah, he just okay, pushes absolutely. a rock up the hill and then eventually he gets to the top and then it rolls down and he has to walk back down to get it. And so he like describes this like this like meditative experience of like being Sisyphus and like you have to push the rock up the hill and it's so hard and you're like going up the hill and it's like it, again like it's so fucking hard and mind blowing and like, struggle, struggle, yeah, struggle. Exactly. And it's it's ridiculous, and like that life is like that, right? Like there's stuff, like there's stuff when you have to like work, you know, like it could be like really painful or whatever. When you do something college you is like that do, for me right now. Exactly. It's like I, I'm struggling, struggling, slaving away, and then this end destination, the top of the hill. And like you know, all you can see really is like the rock in front of you, uh -huh. right? And like maybe the sky a little bit, but you're not really appreciating that because you're trying to push the rock. So and the rock the top, being a metaphor for the moment, sure, the temporary kind of, struggle, sure, sure, whatever the struggle is, yeah. And then so you get to the top and it rolls down. And, like, you're at the top of this hill now, or the top of this mountain or whatever, and you can see, like, for miles in front of you, and it's, like, beautiful, right? Mm. And it's, like, like again, like, it's crazy because it's just, like, use your imagination here and imagine being on top of a fucking hill and, like, the dopamine, like, immediately it's, like, a dopamine surge. Like, your, your brain's, like, yes, this is beautiful. Beauty, baby. Gotta love it. And so, so Sisyphus, at this point, the rock's fucking rolling down the hill, and he knows he's gonna have to do it again, but he just drinks in... Like, slowly walking down the hill, just drinking the beauty of it, right? Like, before, like, having to resume, like, the crap. So, uh -huh. like, to me, that's just really powerful because, again, like, if you're looking for beauty, if you're trying to appreciate stuff, like, around you, like, that's just, that's that's going to be better than being, like, fuck everything, I guess, uh -huh. right? Or, like, you know, like, like, I don't know, I've been in, like, dark mindsets before where, like, every, you know, just even, like, on an overcast day, sometimes it's hard to, like, have, like, a a positive outlook on life uh -huh. but if you just view everything as absurd like everything's just silly right if i go get in a car accident right now and like total my fucking like super like stupid car that i can barely afford mm -hmm. like am i gonna be sad about that or can i just laugh it off and be like yeah at least i'm alive like <laughs> yeah like so know? it's absurdism like, it's, it's is almost like a positive interpretation of nihilism instead of saying like fuck this nothing matters it's like nothing matters therefore this is funny. Don't take this is, too seriously. Right. So, like, it's Buddhist. It's uh, oh, similar to the Joker as well. Like, uh, why so serious? You know, like... Why so it, serious? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's the same. Sim similar stuff. Dude, like, I'm totally... Because I've, I've like, kind of made the argument just, like, within my own head. I've never actually discussed this with anybody, but I've... I'm like, why is nihilism, like, so incredibly terrible? I feel like that's just one response of the outlook of nothing matters. It's like, it's like nothing matters, so fuck the world fuck me fuck my parents fuck everybody mm -hmm. like nothing matters and then there's the other response which is more correlated uh or more of like a uh, i guess attributed to absurdism from based on what it sounds like is nothing really matters or nothing's to be taken that seriously so like be able to laugh it off even when things seem like so non-trivial and so just uh fundamentally just disempowering and and lifeless like it just kind of drains the life out of you drains the meaning out of you so that the absurdism is kind of empowering that perspective and the aspect that hey this this doesn't matter too much it's all temporary don't take it too seriously well and so i think like it, it's helpful to contextualize it to uh like the time where like like philosophy now like uh I feel like there's been a lot of like new age stuff, you know, I mean, Christianity is flourished and like branched out and like, there's all these ideologies, right. They're going to uh -huh. tell you the meaning behind your life, right? Like everything happens for a reason um. right? and stuff like that. And Nietzsche would be like, that's not true. Like there is no meaning, right. That's nihilism. Literally. It's not that everything happens for a reason. God didn't like invent the bubonic plague plague to kill a bunch of people, like for a good reason. Right. Like all these people dying, like, you know, you'd say, Oh, they're in a better place now. Like, you know, that kind of stuff. Like that is, there's no evidence of that, right? So Which it's so it's so it's a lie. It's it so into pleasing a, for us to throw our projections of that and be able to to project some form of meaning on there because it gives us some form of uh, I guess internal sanity. The or, mean, dude, the meaning behind it, right? It's re it makes you feel better, right? Like that's uh, the thing. And so Nietzsche claims that it's better. It would be better to have some truth, right? You're uh, you're gonna be better off with the truth and feeling good about what's true than feeling good about something that's just made up. Right, so it's like instead of living in some form of a fantasy land, this false duality, right? So to make the two inseparable, and we're trying to explain the reasoning behind why your behavior was this way, and maybe it's primarily attributed to uh, nature, but there's also, I mean, there's inevitably going to be an element of nurture as well because that's going it that 
that stimuli from your external conditioning and external environment is going to inevitably play into upon your your behavior, decision making, whatever. Uh, so maybe it's like ninety percent nature, but then it, it's also like ten percent uh, this. Like it's inescapable to say that it's one or the other, and that's where that kind of reconciles the false duality of the two of nature versus nurture. So, okay. So I don't know if, if I'm, ca- I might be contradicting myself here, but I, I just like to think that your genes are like, it, it's, it's like a historical issue, right? Your genes are the predication of your, like, you know, like your nature is going to be like what happens before your nurture. Right. Okay. So they're both going to inform, you know what I mean? Like equally. And like, you know, maybe like, and I don't know that your brain necessarily works like this, but you know, it seems like developmental psychologists like say that it does like you know you have a, a kid will be like prone to rage right and it's like that could just be like a genetic thing right where like mm-hmm. his brain is producing extra rage signals uh, or whatever right to more adrenaline signal. or or like there's other people will be like oh no he just like hasn't been properly like conditioned to deal with anger in a way that's like that's socially acceptable right so like if you're early if you, childhood whatever and, and we can't we can't distinguish between the two but we're still trying to like figure out like how that works but 